Hey guys, D Mike here from our episode of Super Nintendo Sundays. We're getting very close to the end of Mega Man X, so we're gonna take on our final Maverick, the Flame Mammoth. He's a big boy. He's got the fire wave. And we're gonna make him wave goodbye, so prepare yourselves. I think Flame Mammoth is one of the most interesting lead designed of the Mavericks. I think it looks really cool. I enjoyed it a lot. And this stage is interesting. It's not super complicated, but it's fun. And this stage in particular is a little different. Like I mentioned before, some of the stages do have aesthetic and potentially gimmick changes based on what order you do the Mavericks, which I think was kind of uh, forward thinking for the time. This stage in particular, as you can see, the floor is kind of hardened over. That's because we thought Chill Penguin was our first Maverick. Had we just gone after Chill, Chill Penguin later and done Flame Mammoth first, then the floor would be lava. And as much as I love playing the floor as lava, it's not quite as fun this time around. So this episode is going to be wrapping up Flame Mammoth, which we will do now. And then we're going to do some collectibles that we have to wrap up. So to our left, as you can see, as I casually miss five or six times in a row, these are the headbutt blocks that we experienced in Storm Eagle. So we were taking care of that Maverick. We get that special upgrade to the helmet and we get an even better upgrade here. This is the only other time in the game that I'm aware of that these headbutt blocks exist. So you have to break through this little barrier, and in doing so, you're gonna get an upgrade to your X-Buster, which does increase the power of the regular shot, which is very nice, as you'll see here in a moment. X is gonna go ahead and be very kind and give us a little bit of a demo, which is super cool and fun. This is not me doing this. The game actually forces you to do this. So you'll see now that we've got a nice kind of pinky shot, which is fun. Those headbutt blocks, you have to be very careful with when you're jumping onto that. When you break the one that's on the far right side, make sure that you don't slip off that ledge, because if you do, the others will break and you won't be able to jump back up there. You need all of them. So just keep that in mind. So as part of Flame Mammoth stage, we are going to wrap up the collectibles that are in this one. I think that you actually do need to beat Chill Penguin stage in order to get that heart tank, maybe. At the very least, it makes it easier. So you're not taking a ton of damage. You don't want that. So we are doing this stage as if it was the first time, because it is. But we're going to collect as much of the stuff as possible in this one. I believe we're able to wrap up this stage, actually, in one go. So having all the other Mavericks beat does make it easier. Some of the stages do require you to have a power-up or a specific weapon to be able to unlock all of the all the goodies. So that's what we're gonna do today. But this one we actually can do in just one swipe. So you're gonna take a leap of faith here to your left. There's more blocks. I guess these ones, they look, the headbutt blocks and the foot blocks, I guess are synonymous in this one, but in Stink Chameleon, they were actually bricks. And this one, they're like, they look more synthetic. So I don't know, but you can break those, get yourself an E-Tank. There's four of those in the game. As of right now, we have two of them. So we're gonna need to get two more by the end of this episode. We're gonna do a 100% run of getting all the goodies, which is gonna make the game easier on my end, which is useful. My lack of skill plus a full arsenal of weapons will make the final gauntlet of stuff easier and more enjoyable for me as I have to hopefully not replay this a million times because we are getting very close to the end. So we're gonna finish up Flame Mammoth today Get all them goodies, my goodies, and then we'll take on the final stage, is, stage is plural, I guess. I'm still on the fence on how I want to handle that. I don't know if I want to do all the final stages in one episode or not. That might be a nice tidy way to wrap it up. But they are quite long and there is a, a lot of work to be done. So we'll see, I might do a a time trial to see kind of exactly where I fall in terms of timing, so we'll, we'll go for that. But it's time to, uh, it's time to face Flame Mammoth. It's actually a pretty fun fight. I enjoy this one a lot. Of all the bosses, it kind of has the coolest gimmick. I'm going to switch through different items as I fight. I'm actually only going to use two of the special items, or special weapons, I should say. 
in this fight. But the true weakness of Flame Mammoth is Storm Eagle's Tornado, so we're going to use that primarily. I do believe in this fight we will get to see all of Flame Mammoth's special techniques, which is cool. One thing you have to be mindful of when he's hopping around is he's a big boy, so he's going to cause that floor to do a little rumble rumble. So whenever he jumps around, if you are not in the air when he comes to the ground, it will stun you for a moment. So. Use that opportunity to jump in the air. He's gonna spit goo at us, his delicious trunk goo. Looks like he's blowing his nose at us, to be honest. So that trunk of his, though, is a bit of a weak spot. And if you use the boomerang cutter four times in a row, you can cut it off. Kind of turns into a bit of a pig, I think. So now he's flame piggy instead of flame mammoth. He's a bit of a piggy anyway, he's a big boy. So I think it looks very silly, but I like the fact that they added that. I think that's kind of a nice touch. That boomerang cutter move can also be used on launch octopus as well. It'll cut off his tentacles. So no rule 34, but you know, a couple of tornado shots. He's done. Not too hard of a fight. Once you get the chest upgrade, once you get all the special weaknesses, this game does become exponentially easier as it's supposed to, that's kind of the way it's intended. But it's only if you do them in the order that's like considered quote-unquote canon. So, we're gonna accept our prize, the Fire Wave. I think that this is actually my favorite look for Mega Man, kind of the orange and red. Gives me a kind of a fall, Halloween-y sort of vibe. Once again, my code, if you'd like to follow along, enjoy yourselves progressing on the journey. But once all the Mavericks are done, we get a little cutscene. We're going to go and infiltrate Sigma's Fortress. And then Zero's like, bye, see ya. So there's uh, there's the head honcho himself, the leader of said Mavericks, Sigma. But we're not going to do that right away. Like I mentioned, we're not quite there yet. So we're going to do our collect-a-thon in this episode. All of the things that I'm going to be picking up will require a little bit of a progress through the stages themselves, so bear with me as I do that. We're going to get the rest of those heart tanks and energy tanks. We want to be at 100% when we're trying to fight Sigma. It'll make our lives a little bit easier and make me less prone to throwing my controller in rage. I don't think I've ever actually done that, but I've gotten pretty close. So first up is Chill Penguin. Some of the stages have multiple pickups that I wasn't able to get prior because A, I wasn't equipped for it, or B, I lacked awareness and forgot. Probably more uh, option two than option one, but some of them we actually could not do until having the proper acquisition of items. So now we do. We literally have everything, as I forget how to jump. So definitely the lack of awareness one. That's, that's pretty prime here. But yeah, once... Once I was able to acquire all of the, the power-ups and different weapons, it unlocks the entire game, essentially. So, in Shell Penguin stage, shockingly, there were those domes up ahead that we saw briefly when we were using the mech suit. Now, those domes can be broken by the mech suit, but there was one that was blocked by the roof that we couldn't get to. So, once we're able to get to that area, we'll see that our newly acquired fire wave from flame mammoth will prove dividends for us so we're actually going to skip the mech suit do a quick demonstration of the dome breakage and you'll see that we actually are better off without the mech suit i don't trust the dashing and jumping abilities sometimes i have the unfortunate reality of trying to jump with the mech suit, jumping out of the mech suit, and then jumping into a cavern to my death. So I'm going to skip that this time around for my health. And we're going to use our fire wave to break open this dome for no reason. I forgot that there were two. But this dome has one of the final heart tanks. So we're getting close. There are a total of 32 energies that you're going to have throughout your time in Mega Man X. 
So that's one down. The next stage has actually got quite a few goodies in it, and by quite a few, I mean two. Spark Mandrel, we'll do a quick revisit here and see a little bit of aesthetic changing in the stage and an actual gameplay change we'll see in a moment. So what's really cool, aside from this rockin' track, is that beating Storm Eagle will cause this stage, which is supposed to be a power plant, I believe, to have the power on and off flickering effect be throughout the entire stage, not just the end part with the moon guys. So that's pretty neat. There's our E-Tank. I'm gonna show you exactly how not to use the boomerang cutter. So in case you guys were curious, here is a proper improper technique. So this is very good. This is actually how you can use it eventually to get it. Um, probably in my experiences, I would say it doesn't take a dozen boomerangs, but hey, at the very least, if you miss, you get them back. So there's that. And there's a wall that we can't climb. So this is kind of a a very good tutorial on how not to navigate this stage. You're welcome. We're gonna keep going though. We have one more thing left to grab. And what's nice, as we continue along, and as we get these energy tanks, the energy that we do grab from these enemies will benefit us. It's gonna turn into E-tank energy. Those sub-tanks will fill up as long as your health is full. And you collect bonus health energy, it will fill up those E-tanks. So that's very, very good. It's very useful. Especially if you're running low and you're goofing around, your boots get goofing like me, you can pop into those E-tanks. I think that it'll give you a full heal for at least one HP bar. If not, it's like half. So that's pretty good, especially on the final boss. But thankfully the game is kind and will allow you to fill up your E-tanks later on. So now that we have destroyed Storm Eagle's airship and it's taken out the power plant. This guy, I don't even know what this is, this weird nucleus, uh, is a lot easier. It's neutered, actually. It's not going to be able to shoot electric bursts at us. It can still jump on us, which is heckin' rude, but thankfully, aside from the frame rate issues, it's not going to be able to do the electric shock attacks, and with our upgraded buster, it can do a pretty good amount of damage. I say that, although I primarily just shot lemons at it the entire time because I know it's not really a fan of citrus, so that's actually the weakness of that boss. But it should be thankful because we're helping to prevent scurvy, so you're welcome. The rest of the stage takes place as usual. That's the only downside to kind of going back and revisiting this stuff is like you don't really, you know, you don't get much out of, there's no replayability aside from trying to pick up the items that maybe you missed. And you can do these at any point. There's nothing saying that you have to wait until you collect all the items and whatnot. I mean, you're gonna need specific items to collect the bonus stuff, specifically Boomer Quanger's Boomerang. Once you have that though, you can basically go and get everything aside from the Fire Wave. So here's another example of using the Boomerang. We're gonna do some tutorial practice swings just to show you what not to do. But we always get them back just in case. There it is, that's it. And what's nice is that once you're done collecting those heart tanks, those sub tanks, you can just get out. That's it, easy peasy. Okay, so we're back. We're gonna go ahead and do the last two item collections and then there's gonna be a secret surprise. We're doing a little bit of armored armadillo our favorite frame rate chugging stage. This one's real quick, not too bad, but we will be doing a revisit of Armored Armadillo here in a moment. But for now, we're just gonna get the one item we're missing. These last two are very quick, not too difficult to do. But anytime you hear that, that boo doop or the boo boo sound, that means that you're getting bonus health. That's very good. So, with the big excavator, let him run past you. Snatch yourself up that E-Tank right behind him. So now all we gotta do is hit up Boomer Quanger for one final heart tank. This is the one that I mentioned before that you actually need his power to get. I mean, it's not the only way to do it, but it's the 
I would say the most practical way to do it is just to beat Boomer Quanger and to take him out, get his item, come back, and do it that way. It'll just save you a headache. Plus, you get to listen to this jamming tune one last time, which I think is great. This stage is very unique and cool. And now that we've become so adept at dodging lasers, we're so pro. But we can't apparently do dodge bombs. Bomb turtles are going to haunt me in my sleep. I just know it. But there's lots of HP items aplenty to be collecting along the way. We're going to get to the point of the game where... Everything just kind of feels a little easy, you know, like as we're picking up all these items, we're revisiting these boss stages that maybe on the first go, they were very daunting. Maybe, oh, there's a clip that I wasn't expecting to get. I probably should have died there. So I guess all my good karma has been paying off, opening doors and saying please and thank you and cash in right there. But the game up to this point, you know, it gets easier as you play. Obviously that's how most games are. You get more familiar, you get better with the mechanics. You get power-ups and goodies to help you along your way. But that's all going to come to a head here briefly. These Sigma stages coming up are pretty tough, and I don't have muscle memory for them beyond my youth. So it's been years since I've gotten to this point of the game. And, um, you know, full, full vulnerability here. I've never actually, quote-unquote, beat this game 100%. I don't know if I've ever actually beaten the final boss of this game, so you guys will be seeing that in person for the first, not in person, but you'll be seeing it over the internet. I'm in person, I'm real, I think. I mean, I know birds aren't real, but I am. So that's an actually very, it's a very existential thing for me to say. I'm not gonna get into that, but the, um, yeah, this will be my first time actually ever fully completing the game, which I think is great. This is one of the best ones. One of my favorites of my childhood. It's going to be a very bittersweet thing that I'm almost done, but, you know, there will be replacements. So here it is, that hard tank that, if I could figure out how distance works and, you know, understanding spatial dynamics, I'd be great. But that's the, uh, that's the final hard tank, ladies and gentlemen. But, alas, that is not the final thing we're going to be doing today. We're going to go right back into Armored Armadillo. I kind of did these out of order, not on purpose, but this is a special gimmick to this game, a special bonus power-up, I guess you could call it. It's a throwback to another Capcom series, so you'll have to figure that one out for yourself when you see it. But to get to this point, before you get to Armored Armadillo's stage again for this special, you're going to want to have at least four lives, all special weapons, all upgrades, all heart tanks, all E-tanks, full health. If you can do that, you're going to run through Armored Armadillo stage all the way to the end where there's that big leap of faith that you have to take, and you're going to jump off of the minecart thing that you're on, and you're going to want to land at the top where that power-up is, where that health energy is. Collect that three times in a row. Make sure you get at that energy. It's really important. And then on the fourth time, when you jump up there, it's not going to be that energy anymore, there's going to be something special. And this is that fourth time around. I didn't feel the need to show the other three because it's very redundant, but you're going to want to make sure that you have full health up to that point or this kind of special cheat thing. It's not really a cheat, but it feels cheating to use what I'm about to get. I will not be using it um, through the rest of the game, but I will show it off. You get this special thing as we kill these very unreal birds, and there's a capsule up here. And as you can see, it's Dr. Light, but he's dressed differently. He's got a gi and a headband on. And he's gonna give us a special power-up. He looks very suspicious, like a certain fighting game. The game that you might play outside your home, on a road, perhaps. And in doing so, gets you the Hadouken from Street Fighter. So that's very exciting. That move, if you perform it like the Hadouken from Street Fighter. It's a one-hit kill, it takes a little bit of time to charge up, but there you go. So that's all the collectibles. Flame Mammoth is done. Next time, we are gonna take on Sigma. This has been Super Nintendo Sundays. I've been D-Mike, I'll see you next time. Bye.